It may have looked like a squid, but the beautifully preserved fossil of a creature with ten arms is the oldest known ancestor of another group of animals that include octopuses and vampire squid, US scientists say. Key points. A 328 million year old fossil appears to have 10 legs with suckers and remnant of an internal shell. A 328 million year old fossil appears to have 10 legs with suckers and remnant of an internal shell. Scientists believe it is the earliest known ancestor of octopuses and vampire squid. Scientists believe it is the earliest known ancestor of octopuses and vampire squid. They've named the fossil in honor of President Joe Biden. We have soft tissues that are preserved in such good detail that we can actually see individual suction cups on the arms," said Christopher Whalen of the American Museum of Natural History. The torpedo-shaped creature with fins on its back swam in the tropical waters that covered North America around 328 million years ago. Its fossilized body was excavated more than three decades ago and put away on a museum shelf until Dr. Whalen and his colleague Neil Landman stumbled upon it. Dubbed Solipsomopida bidini, it has joined the pool of species named in honor of US presidents. The fossil, described today in the journal Nature Communications, pushes back by 82 million years the time when vampiropods evolved. Squid-like but not a squid. Vampiropods are one of three groups of softbow cephalopods that contain vestiges of internal shells. The group includes the enigmatic vampire squid, which is neither a bloodsucker nor a squid, and is related to octopuses. Dr. Whalen said the fossil provides insight into the point when vampiropods split away from their squid cousins. It's very interesting showing you the earliest stages of that evolutionary line. The fossil of Solipsomopida bidini spent 30 years on a museum shelf before the researchers stumbled upon it. It had long been thought that ancestral vampiropods had ten arms like today's squids and cuttlefish, but this is the first time it has been found in the fossil record. That's never been documented before in vampiropod, Dr. Whalen said. Along each arm appeared to be suckers. This helps confirm that suckers are a very old adaptation, he said. Two of the ancient animals' arms were longer than the other eight, similar to squid and cuttlefish, which use the longer arms as hands to grab food. So one possibility is that early on, these things were behaving a lot more like squids. It is this feature that inspires the name of the creature's genus, Solipsomopody, which is Greek for prehensile foot. By the beginning of the age of dinosaurs, about 80 million years after S, Bidini appeared, vampiropod fossils looked more like today's vampire squids which have eight arms and two long filaments. Loading. Eventually, octopuses evolved with just eight arms. For whatever reason, those elongated arms were no longer useful, so they were evolutionarily reduced until they were completely lost in modern octopuses, Dr. Whalen said. But what really sets this animal apart from its squid cousins is what's happening inside its body. The ancient animal had a long, triangular-shaped, semi-transparent feature made out of chitin called a gladius. The gladius, which is named after a Roman sword, is the soft outer remnant of the hard shell found inside species such as cuttlefish. Cuttlefish, which are in the squid family, have a hard bone in their body to help them float. The hard shell, known as a cuttlebone, is important for buoyancy in cuttlefish, a member of the group Decabrachia, which includes squid and their relatives. A few other members of the squid family also have remnants of the hard shell that can only be seen through a microscope, but most just have a gladius. Vampiropods, such as vampire squid, have ditched the shell altogether and only have a gladius, which is shaped slightly differently to those in the squid family. In octopuses, the soft gladius is reduced even further to two tiny rods that support the fins. Having an organism this early on that's lost the shell on the vampiropod side indicates that they developed an alternative means of buoyancy control relatively early in their evolutionary history, Dr. Whalen said. Today, vampiropods mainly control their buoyancy through the regulation of chemicals in their tissues rather than any hard structure. Very rare fossils. Dr. Whalen said it was rare to find vampiropods in the fossil record. 
you can usually only get them preserved in rather special settings. The fossil was found in the Bear Gulch Lagerstatt Formation in Montana, which was once a tropical sea. Part of the reason we think that this fossil is preserved in such great detail is the monsoons that have been predicted to have occurred in this area, Dr. Whalen said. When this animal, it sank to the sea floor and was quickly covered by silt washed into a prehistoric bay by the monsoonal rains, which preserved its soft tissues including the gladius and arms. Having the actual arms is very rare, he said. But whether those arms actually have suckers is still up for debate, said Patrick Smith, a paleontologist at the Australian Museum who studies cephalopod fossils such as giant nautiloids. They and the US researchers do present images which possibly represent suckers, but it's a bit equivocal either way, Dr. Smith said. Dr. Smith said interpreting soft bow fossils can be extremely challenging. For instance, there has been a lot of controversy surrounding a previous contender for the earliest known ancestor of octopuses, known as Pulsepia, which lived around the same time as S. Bidini. Many scientists now believe Pulsepia was not even a cephalopod. It's always difficult to interpret any fossil that is made out of soft material, Dr. Smith said. As soon as a structure has undergone even slight decay, you lose features that are subtle features that are useful for identification. Dr. Smith said S. Bidini's internal features were reminiscent of vampire squid and octopus, and the age of the fossil aligned with the timing of squid and vampiropod families splitting in the DNA record of modern cephalopods. But he said it was always good to see additional specimens to be certain about bold claims. A name for a president. S. Bidini was named in honor of the inauguration of President Joe Biden. I submitted my paper fairly soon after his inauguration, and it seemed like a natural way to celebrate that moment, Dr. Whalen said. I was particularly encouraged by some of the plans that he put forward to counter climate change. The ancient cephalopod is not the first animal species named after recent presidents. Dermaphis Donald Trumpy, with Mr. Trump's hair on its head, was named in a public ballot by a UK environmental company. Donald Trump has Dermaphis Donald Trumpy, a blind amphibian from Panama that buries its head in the sand, along with a moth and a fossil sea urchin. While Barack Obama has at least nine species named after him including an extinct prehistoric lizard, a trapdoor spider, a bird, and several invertebrates including a blood fluke and some fish. The lizard, Obamadan, named after President Barack Obama. Carl Buell, a Yale University.